Good afternoon everyone. This is Linda with Linda Soup Plants for you. I'm going to bring you another short video here. Well, I shouldn't say short. It might be long. I'm hoping it's going to be short. I have, um, I need another moss pole. I, well, people call it a moss pole, but it's a, it can be made out of other things besides moss and this one is, it's going to be made out of coca coir. I've never used this before. I usually use the um, um, sphagnum moss, the layered sphagnum moss, and I didn't have any, and they didn't have any at the stores I went to. Over the weekend, my husband took me to Lowe's and Menards, and I forget what else, and they did not have any. So. What I did find was uh, this, and it was only $4. It is a, um, it's a coca coir liner for a long planter. And I thought, well, you know what, for 4 bucks, if I would have bought a bag of sphagnum moss, that probably would have been right about the same price. And uh, so I thought I would try this. Um, <clears throat> I usually make my my um, poles out of the sphagnum moss with metal quarter inch metal. It's ca called hardware cloth, or some people call it um, I know something with the word bunny in it. It 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 protects the gardens, and you sometimes see it attached to the little metal poles around people's gardens. Um, but that works really well. It bends easily. And I put I tie it together with the zip trap ties, which is really simple. You just put one in one end and one in the other end, pull it tight and snip it off. It's very neat looking and it's um and it works very well. But I didn't have couldn't find any uh sphagnum moss and I didn't have enough of the hardware cloth. So I thought, you know, I was talking to my friend Suzette from Suzette's Gardens. And she had given me a couple different ideas. One was burlap, which if I, I, I did look for that and I couldn't find that either. Um, but that works very well. And this, my understanding is this works very well. So I'm going to try it. I have my twine and my pole. And these, I like these because they're very strong. They hold a lot of weight and they don't rot. So I'm going to start it right about here because I want to make sure that it's going to, this part is not going to be stuck in the soil because I don't want that constantly wicking up the moisture. So I'm probably going to start it right about here, but I've never done this on camera before. So I hope that you can see what I'm doing and um, I hope this will be helpful to some of you. I think I'm going to move this camera just a little bit. This might be better. That's better. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's just get started. Don't really need to listen to me yakking here. And Boy, there's a lot more here than I even thought. So I might be able to get two out of this. But I think I'm going to cut this off because it's kind of uneven down here and I want to start out with a, with an even spot. I think I'm going to make this even on this end as well. I think you can see where it kind of goes off on an angle and that's just going to make it harder to wrap. So I'm just going to straighten that out. I can always add that to it and tie it down if I need the extra. So I won't throw this away. I'm sure I can use it for something. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my twine, 
put it underneath and I'm sure many of you have seen this process before so I will try not to belabor it <coughs> okay I'm leaving roughly 10 inches or so yeah maybe I'll make it closer to 12 it's okay if a little of this sticks out of the soil I don't mind it it's going to be covered in plants eventually and I'd rather have a little of this pole showing than have this cocoa coir down in the soil I do not wet any of my moss poles and I know some people do I don't find the need to do that I just I use it basically so that the roots have something to crawl up onto and I don't like keeping all that wetness near the foliage so I do not do that now I can see already this is going to be a problem because I could really use another hand um, but we're just going to have to do a little at a time um, well, looks about right tie it in a knot Trying to do a square knot like my brother taught me many years ago. And I don't like that it's moving around on here. I may have to use a little hot glue under here to keep it from sliding. And that's how I used to attach my sphagnum moss when I did, when I used that. So I didn't even think about the fact that that could happen. But that's not a big deal. I can put tape down here. I can put sphagnum, I mean, a uh, little hot glue, whatever, to hold that on. It'll be fine. All right, so I'm going to wind this up. I don't know um, how many of you are have watched my uh, video right before this. I did earlier this morning about my Rex begonia. And those of you that have been following me, you will remember the mishap I had with that. And this morning I did an update on it. <clears throat> Very exciting. I gave up on it. I, I really, it was, as a last ditch effort, I repotted the crown of the plant and I put it in um, a clay pot with some fresh soil. And I talked to it because I do talk to my plants now and then. Sometimes people will ask me, do they answer you? Well, Obviously, they don't speak verbally, but sometimes they do answer me with their, by producing the, the growth that I'm looking for. And in this instance, that's exactly what happened. I was just walking around looking at my plants one day, and I was on the phone with a friend when I was doing that, and I scared the heck out of her because I let out such a yell because I was so excited. I saw new growth coming from my Rex Begonia. Two new shoots coming up. So I think she's going to make it. And I can't tell you how excited I am about that. And I'll be doing updates on that periodically, so... Hopefully you'll come back and see it. it. It was a really, really gorgeous plant before I knocked it over on the floor. Uh, 
Okay. You know, this is a this is one way of doing this, but I can already t tell you that I'm not liking this method near as much as using the hardware cloth. It goes much faster, it's a lot neater, it's more uniform, and I know some people don't like that uniform look, so maybe this would be better for you. But I think I may have to come back down with this twine because it doesn't, it just doesn't seem very, very sturdy. I don't know. Okay. Now I suppose at this point I could just keep going, but I don't know, I almost feel like I should tie this off first. Hmm. Now this looks like the perfect length, so I think I'm going to use this. Well, you know what, I have to get this done because I have got to get this in this plant. So, we are going to snip this off and tie it up and make it work. As I often do in my plant world, I don't always have the things that I need when I need them. And Sometimes we have to improvise and, you know, we have to do that in all walks of life, so that's okay. Next time I have a uh, the materials that I've used over the years to make these, I will do a video on that for you all so that you can see um, how that works and see how simple it is and 
and, and truly it was much easier than this was so and I, I liked the overall ending look of it better than I'm better than what I'm getting here right now so I think I will probably go back to my old way of doing it and call it a day but for now we're gonna finish this up as best we can and really when all is said and done the plant is not going to care one bit other than it's going to have something to attach its aerial roots too and it's going to make it a lot stronger and healthier and that's really the whole point of it in the first place so. and I am going to go back down Before I stick this in the plant, I am going to run some hot glue on the end of that because as you can see it is moving and This is separating here, and I don't like that either. That I do not want to see. I don't want to see that white coal sticking out the middle of my plant. But I think it is... There's a good possibility that's going to happen, whether I want it to or not. So. Maybe just running a, a bead of hot glue around this as I was putting it around the pole would have been a much better idea. But like I said, it's, this is my first um, first time using this method. So live and learn. Learn from my mistakes. Okay, I think we're good. I think that's good. Stick that in there. Okay, well, 
This is it. Up to the top. Kind of a little wonky. And as you can see, I went in the other direction going back down with the rope. All the way down to the bottom. I am going to now secure this in the plant and get that tied up. And then I'm going to show you a picture of the finished product when I'm done. So I'll be right back. And there she is. The finished masterpiece. My Monstera Delicioso. I think I made her um, support pole a little tall, but I know she's going to grow fast, and I didn't want to have to do this again before winter was over, so I made it a little taller probably than I needed it, but that's okay. Um, as you can see, a little of the white is showing down there. Um, I might just take some of that leftover burlap that I had, I'm sorry, uh, cocoa coir and glue that around. I don't normally have it that far sticking out of the soil. But it's not a big deal to me. Um, but I suppose it would look a little better if that was covered up. And there she is. This is my uh, Monstera from my if you saw my big box opening my plant haul from the other day or from last week from Suzette from Suzette's Gardens uh, she's a very dear friend of mine and she sent me a boatload of plants and it started with this one because hers was so big and she took a cutting and it grew really big and she said she didn't have room for it and wanted to know if I would like it and well yeah, I jumped at that and along with that she sent a lot of other plants in that box but this was the one that started it all so there she is I've had her planted in the pot and kind of tied up with string but today she's in her permanent home for a while um, you'll notice that I have twine tying the plant to the pole. I don't normally use that or advocate it. Any kind of string, twine, anything that doesn't give, I never use on my um, support poles. I either use elastic that I get from um, estate sales, you know, that we put in our clothing, or I use the uh, garden velcro and the reason for that is I've had in years ago I've had plants that um, I ended up choking off because I had a twist tie or something very stationary around it and I didn't catch it because the plant was so full and I ended up killing off a whole vine of a plant because of it so I don't do that anymore. I know some people do with great success and, and you know, that's wonderful if that works for you, but it doesn't for me. So, like I said, I'm going to be replacing this twine. Um, I've I used it here because for a, a spe expedience sake so I could get this done for you and show you the finished result. But uh, I will be changing that out. Uh, I like to use elastic because it gives. So as the plant moves, um, the elastic, while it's holding it up, will give a little enough that it won't um, harm the stems of the plant. And Velcro works good too, especially the garden Velcro. You can buy it uh, at your local hardware store or garden center. I've seen quite a few people using it on YouTube, and I've been using that for years myself. Um, I think they sell it as a like a tomato vine. Um, product but it works for houseplants really good that's something that you can cut and make it a little too big um, because you can 
make the tightness of it whatever you want and then you can loosen it to whatever you want so uh, that to me is a really good product okay folks I'm gonna wrap this up I just wanted to show you my beautiful beautiful Monstera thank you so much Suzette for everything that you've done for me um, I don't think you'll ever really know how you've made my life so much better and I have to say that because I want people to know what a good person you are and all right and I did put some worm castings in there um, I really like to use that especially when I start a new plant or repot a plant it gives it a little boost helps the growth a lot too okay everyone that's it for today I will have more videos I do have more videos planned I have more coming so be sure to come back and visit when you have time and if you like my video give me a thumbs up and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet hit the subscribe button and don't forget um, the Planty Kindness Project that was started by uh, Pammy's Planty Things here on YouTube. If you need to know more details about that, you can go to her channel and, um, and find that out. But basically, it's just be kind to someone today. Do something nice for someone. Make a difference in somebody's life. All right, thank you so much again for coming. Hope you all have a great rest of your day and rest of your week. Bye now.